Hey guys, um, here's a job that I'm halfway in the middle of. Uh, what it is, is a cordless ratchet. Uh, and when you pull the trigger, uh, it spins the ratchet. It's got a 3 8 inch drive on the end of it. And uh, yeah, quite a handy tool if you're in a tight place and you can't get much, uh, much swing on your um, normal ratchet. So uh, that just spins round and round. But uh, anyway, um, I'll show you what I've found. Uh, when you pull the trigger, uh, they don't work. I've got two of them, and they just won't spin the motor. So, uh, so here's what I've found so far. Now, inside them is a, just a little microcontroller. It's an SN8P2711A uh, 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 derivative. Um, and... Uh, yeah, fairly simple. I've got it sitting on top of the battery at the moment. Um, and this is the FET that drives the motor. Uh, at least I think it's a FET. I'd use one. Might not be. But anyway. Um, then the switch on the trigger, it's just on-off. Uh, I think it has the ability to be a variable position, but they're only using it for on-off. Um, and uh, can't really see... Get, get a good close-up on, on this, unfortunately. Just my camera being uh, as limited as it is. But uh, just quickly, we've got the battery comes in positive here. Um, it goes through the switch first. Um, that powers the circuit. Um, there's this little capacitor, which is uh, on the power input to the chip. Um, and that runs at uh, about... 2.9 volts it seems um, maybe 3 volts so um, anyway it, it sort of looked okay on the multimeter but uh, then I thought well I'll put the scope on it and uh, I've also got the scope just got a wire coming off to the uh, drive to the transistor um, and I will show you the scope and what I've found at the moment Okay, so the um, blue trace is the transistor uh, drive, and the yellow trace is the uh, power feed into the IC, and I will just uh, connect the power. And you can see that the power feed is fluctuating up and down. It's, it's really not stable as soon as I've connected it, which is interesting, because it's off a battery. And then as it stabilizes, you see the blue line comes up and turns the transistor on. Um, so it looks like we have a problem with the uh, power feed to the um, controller. And uh, I did notice um, it, it was intermittent and it would eventually run when it had warmed up. So if I connect that again, see it comes a lot quicker. So... Um, I think that there might be a problem with that little capacitor and is not charging up very well. So yeah, and the longer you leave it um, turned off, the longer it takes to recover and um, it'll fluctuate for longer before it turns on. So uh, I think we're um, onto something with that and I'm going to remove that cap uh, capacitor and uh, test it on the bench see what it looks like as far as um, if it's up to up to spec Okay, it's got the number 106C on it, and one quick data sheet that I found uh, suggests that's 10 microfarad um, to about 6 volts. I and mean, this is only running at sort of 3, so let's just have a look and see what does it say it should be. That says 10 microfarad. That's interesting. So maybe that's okay. And when it tries to trigger on, something's actually loading it down. I wonder what else is fed off that line. Okay, put the cap back in. Obviously not it. Miles away from the problem, aren't I? Okay, so what I've found is something that looks like possibly a low dropout uh, regulator. Uh, this little package here 
uh, with one pin is connected to uh, the IC power and I think if I'm not mistaken just looking at a data sheet for one I couldn't find the exact one the pin to the chip is the output we've got in on on the bottom right and the top right is enable to turn the thing on I guess and uh, then we've got uh, top left looks like battery positive um, input so no wrong yeah no in out enable something called BP perhaps and something in the middle that's unused um, yeah let's probe those and see what they're doing at the same time this thing's fluctuating uh, if the input's fluctuating then the output will fluctuate if the output's fluctuating on its own maybe that little regulator just can't hack the pace but uh, there let's have a look okay so that was wrong <laughs> uh, while this little regulator like device uh, is attached to pin one um, it's not actually supplying uh, what is supplying it is this device over here it's got uh, 12 volts in and 3 volts out so uh, I suppose we need to monitor the output of that one well we know we know it goes directly to it I know the inputs always 12 so if it's jumping around uh, I'm pretty sure there's nothing in between but uh, we'll double check that okay so let's just uh, probe on the output of that and I'm pretty sure we all know what it's going to do it's going to be a bit dodgy and turn it on look at that and there we go and our input which I think is the side which is going to be 12 no, it looks like the input is the center. We better find out what exactly this device is. If it's an adjustable regulator, make sure the adjusting um, circuitry is working. Um, if it's just a transistor, um, yeah. And okay, it is a uh, 30 milliamp uh, low power, uh, low dropout uh, regulator. Um, part number HT7130-1 for 3 volt operation. And we've got a ground uh, in and out, so it's yeah, not adjustable, it's just it is what it is. And uh, yeah not a lot to it so it's quite likely that uh, it's just failing I've measured the resistance on the output to ground and it's 50 odd mega ohms so I don't think it's drawing excess current and shutting down um, I think it's just a dodgy regulator so just looking at the input of the regulator and uh, there does seem to be a little bit of a blip when you first um, hit the trigger. You see it'll shoot up and then drop slightly. That was quite a big drop. And that one was a quite a big drop. Yeah, look at that. So, so let's look at the input to this regulator a bit more. Because um, it does look like there might be a couple of surface mount... Um, caps on there that I suppose if they're going uh, low resistance and upsetting things and that uh, I've seen it happen um, and uh, they can uh, sort of appear short circuit and then go open and then uh, under different loads the resistance can change um, might explain why I've seen because what I'm doing is I've got a little jumper wire um, just so because pushing the switch is quite a hard switch so I've got a jumper wire that I'm just touching on the switch and sometimes I get a spark and to get a spark off something that's that's just a low powered circuit makes you wonder what's going on there uh, well there's not a great deal going on in here but it comes through power comes through the switch 
um, and it then travels actually through a little diode. Uh, so whether that diode's breaking down, um, then it, there's a resistor which is um, 100 ohm, although it measures 200 in circuit, uh, and then out to these two uh, surface mount caps in parallel, which uh, then goes into the regulator. So I guess we should maybe check the input to the diode perhaps. The diode did measure okay, but unless it's um, breaking down under load, um, but uh, I don't even see a low resistance on those caps. So I suppose we could try it without the caps um, just to see what happens, um, or maybe just take one out and see what happens. Um, it's 12 volts from a battery, there's there's no sort of ripple on it or anything like that. So the caps are just probably there for a bit of, um, just to make sure, but uh, um, it's worth a shot, I suppose. See if it um, comes right without them or not. But uh, maybe even check that resistor out of circuit, but another 100 ohms. Uh, I don't know if that would really make much effect. Mm. Right, so here it is before the diode. Sorry. <laughs> here it is uh, after the diode, before the resistor. Um, which then goes through to the capacitors. So straight after the diode, bang, no dropping. As soon as we get after the resistor, it fluctuates a bit. Yeah, so I'm going to take the resistor out and check its value, um, and then failing that, I'm going to go for those capacitors. Well, after heating it, it's gone to uh, 600 ohms, and I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that 100 should be a lot less than 600. Oh my god, I'm such a potato. So, um, yep, it's actually 10 ohms, not 100 ohms. The last zero is the multiplier which is zero so one zero zero anyway this is a nightmare trying to find some junk that's actually got any on it 101 so 100 ohms <laughs> seems to be the common the common uh, well sorry the, the, the more used very popular type in circuits I've gone through a whole pile of junk and nothing has a 10 ohm on it so yeah pull out your hair and scream. <laughs> well that was a probably good half hour of hunting and I've actually found two that are going to be the right size to fit and they are uh, yeah 10 ohm and um, this is the main board out of a shitty old Philips DVD player and it's not a very happy main board but um, it's going to be parts. So, if you need 10 ohm surface mount, frickin' tiny little frickin', not sure which uh, size that is offhand, but it's pretty small. And uh, Philips, Philips, old Philips DVD player, there you go. Um, if you really, really want to know, I could post a model number. So, let's pull that off, and I've got two of them, so if the second unit is the same fault, which it probably is, um, we're in luck. And here we go. 100 should equal 10 ohms like that. Not, not 600 ohms like the last one. Not 100 ohms like I thought. I'm going to blame my cold. I don't care what you think. Let's check this out again. So here we have before resistor. No delays, no... no no dropping and pulsing and whatnot, and here we have after resistor. Perfect. Now that resistor is going to be a current inrush limiting resistor. Um, that's what I reckon it is, um, being a 10 volt um, battery with, uh, well, 12 volt fully charged, but 10.8 is what it says on the sticker, and a 10 volt. Um, Resist, uh, 10 ohm resistor is going to be uh, an amp max. Um, it's not going to draw an amp maximum, but um, yeah, cool. Okay, so if that's doing that, what is the output on the or the the 
drive to the FET doing? Um, I'm not sure what uh, voltage that is, but uh, we'll see if it uh, comes up stable. There you go. And there was always a slight delay turning on when it did work, and that's probably so if you bump it while you're down beside an engine block or something in a tight space, it doesn't kick without you um, um, expecting it. Cool. I think that's going to do it. Let's get it back together on the motor and see if it runs. All right, here we go. I've got it precariously set up in a vise. So, pull the trigger. How about that? Wonderful. And there we have it. One cordless ratchet. They come under many different um, brandings, but uh, I've, I've seen them in different colours, but basically the same uh, body, so likely the same factory, and so on. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, if you've got one like it that looks identical, uh, it's probably the same. So hopefully that'll help uh, with any issues you've got with yours. And uh, thanks for watching.